Welcome to The Leadership, a business-focused talk show brought to you by The Vested Group. We talk to entrepreneurs, employees, thought leaders, innovators, dreamers, disruptors, and even our own children about what makes us tick on and off the clock. All right, and welcome to The Leadership Talk Show, where we're just trying to figure out, dig into executives and leaders to figure out what makes them tick and why they enjoy working and how to get more of it. So today, uh, I'm Chris Johnson, and I was Chris Johnson yesterday, too, as it turns out. But uh, today, I'm visiting with Reich Sandlin. And Reich Sandlin is the, uh, the founder and, uh, and the senior executive at River Vista Partners. Um, and I want to invite Reich because uh, I have nine old cell phones in my house. I've got daughters and, and uh, wife who've just, we've all just kind of gone through cell phones over time. And I'm scared to death of throwing them away because we've got old pictures We've got cached data, you know, to my, my bank logins, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And I really don't want to, uh, that kind of stuff to, to end up in somebody else's hands. So, so Reich works in an industry uh, that really takes care of that. So can you kind of tell us about what you're doing with River Vista, uh, a little bit about who you are and a little bit about the industry? Sure. Well, good morning, Chris, and thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there is this problem uh, that, that most people don't think about, and that is used electronics. So after they finish their, their useful life, then something needs to happen with them. And so, so that industry has formed around that need, and it's not something that it's not an industry that was needed 40 years ago. Right. It's an industry that's needed today. Yeah. And so fortunately, that, that is coming up and there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are getting involved in building that industry and growing it. Uh, I was involved in that industry as well for, for 15 years, uh, been, been uh, active in it and uh, most recently as a chief operating officer for a large uh, uh, processing company in that industry. So the issues around the environment, the issues around data and eliminating the data and what happens to these toxic materials after the, the useful life ends, these are important issues. And, it's, and these are hard problems to solve. And so what I've been doing with River Vista Partners is uh, helping these, these entrepreneurs, helping these small businesses that are, that are popping up to, to deal with the problem, helping them figure out how to accelerate their path to success uh, how to solve problems without without failing quite yeah. as as often as many yeah. times as they have to, to to learn how to get there quickly. So, uh, taking my experience in, in the industry and, and helping others. Okay. Uh, make okay. Because it's a like you said, it's a young industry. It is. There's um, like most immature industries. There's not necessarily a a proven path. Um, but you're kind of at the forefront of establishing what is that path that helps companies really figure out how to how to do this right. Uh, I am, and, and uh, in addition to, to helping with uh, operations and, and sales and kind of all the di different pieces of the businesses, I've also been involved in setting, setting standards for the industry, standards okay. about how to erase data, uh, okay. standards about how to keep things secure, uh, and about the environment, how to properly uh, you know, repurpose or recycle this equipment. Okay. Okay. So you, you kind of started to go into an area that we really want to dig into because it's you know, this is less about the industry and more about you. Ah, okay. ah, yeah. So we're trying to figure out, you know, the purpose of the show is to, is to visit with executives and figure out, you know, what is it that you enjoy about your work and what's kind of that inner motivation and how do we get more of those things? Mm -hmm. So we can just kind of find more joy in our work. So, so let's start digging in. You mentioned sales operations. Uh, you have to pick up the phone. You have to present to large audiences. Your day probably looks really different from day to day. Is that, is that it, fair? It, it's, it's different hour to hour. Okay. It really is. Do you ever try to find routine in that, or do you just kind of take it as it comes? I, I, what do I, you like? Well, I yearn for routine, <laughs> okay. but the, the nature of the business is I have a, a lot of different clients uh, mm -hmm. that, that I'm helping, uh, and I need to be able to switch, again, hour to hour, uh, day to day, mm -hmm. to meet whatever their need is. So sometimes it's a talking about sales or training a sales team. Sometimes it's doing financial planning uh, for the business and forecasting. Sometimes it's talking about conveyors and, yeah. uh, and software and, and trying to figure out how to, how to you know, make the business run. Okay. Okay. So as you, as you kind of look back through your career, mm -hmm. through all the different stops, was there a time, as you think back, that you had just this really accelerated learning? Mm -hmm. Like there was a, you just absorbed a lot in a short period of time. And and maybe it was driven because there was just a lot put in front of you, or maybe it was a setback, and you had to learn in order to, to move forward. Can you? Was there a time like that? Can you talk about that a little bit? 
Uh, well, a number of times, uh, okay. actually. You know, <laughs> and, and it's uh, it's funny. You know, every time I I had a, a significant career move, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in my career, it it stretched me, and that's a good thing. You know, right. so so you know, putting yourself in a situation that is new. Uh, stretches you, and so mm -hmm. every time that occurred, then yeah, it was an accelerated period of learning and 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 a challenge. So that's, that's a good thing. But uh, do you like the newness? I I, I like to challenge myself, um, yeah. but it's not necessarily comfortable. Okay, right? Because you're in an industry that's new. It is. You're constantly coming up with with what, how are we going to solve this thing that maybe nobody's thought about before. Mm -hmm. Is that interesting to you, or is it is it um, I'm not sure what is it. Or is it a, a fear of uh, if I don't do this thing, somebody something's not going to turn out well? Is it the joy of the newness, or the fear of the not turning out well? Uh, I think it's is I, I love to learn, okay. and so the I think there's the joy in in that newness uh, factor and, and challenging myself okay. to to you know to progress and and you know, move into new areas. Um, so, you know, a few years ago, I, I moved into a new role with, uh, with a, a company in this industry, uh, helping them to, to grow. It was a, you know, a small private entrepreneur led organization and, you know, to be able to, to step in and actually help them to organize, to help them okay. to, uh, to become a better company. Uh, so the pioneer. Yeah. Sort Love of pioneer that. thing. Okay. Uh, but they were pioneering without knowing what the path was. Right. And so being able to help them become more professional, become okay. better organized and grow was, you know, it challenged me sure. to, to tackle these, uh, these new problems. Uh, and I had to learn, learn quickly. Yeah. But it was, uh, uh, it was really refreshing to be able to, to do that for them. Okay. So as you think through the, the activities that you do in a day, uh, you pick up the phone and talk to an individual or you're presenting in front of a large audience, mm -hmm. or you're training an individual or a small group um, in a conference room. What are the kinds of things that you really find yourself enjoying doing? What do you look forward to the most? If you're gonna just kind of think through the type of activity that you're doing. Uh, I, I love communicating with people and, and okay. teaching. I think, I think sort of that, that teaching nature is, is, is something I enjoy okay. doing. So training people or Helping people see, you know, talk about the industry and, and understand the industry uh, that I'm in. You know, you know how, how, do, how do we recycle mm -hmm. computers and cell phones and servers and all that stuff uh, properly? And so a lot of people don't think about that, don't know about that. Right. And so for me to be able to, to help them or to leverage my experience in, in business and help them, oh, I, I just really get a lot of I look forward to that. Okay. Yeah. And so conversely, what do, you, what do you like the least? It's like... Like I've got every once in a while, I've got a, I, I meet somebody new, I'm supposed to pick up the phone and call them to talk about something. And I really do not like to pick up the phone for whatever reason. I think I, I'm just not comfortable with going from I know you to I, I don't know you to I do know you, what that bridge is like. And so I kind of struggle with that a little bit. So what, what is it for you? What do you not like doing? Well, there's, I get, uh, let me bring up two things quickly. One is billing. I don't like the administrative <laughs> yeah. hassle of kind of the red tape and uh, the, yeah, all, yeah. The, all the all the paperwork stuff. Sure. But but the thing that really hurts sometimes is in this consulting business that I have, leaving a client. So after I've helped them get oh. to, get to uh, to the milestone where, where they feel yeah. ready to take it on, now I'm, I'm not engaged with them every day or every week anymore and and you know well i, I want to see them succeed i want to see what's on the other you yeah know, after i leave and, and that's yeah, kind of invested problem. in them personally at that I point am. and yeah but you got to pull away and leave we've okay. built relationships yeah. yeah that's interesting okay all right well i've enjoyed visiting with you we're going to bring up heidi next because you've been able to take um, a strengths finder test and find out kind of dig into you a little bit more and uh, so heidi's going to come in uh, from flourish and she's going to tell us about what she's learned kind of the from your strengths Enjoy. Good morning, my name is Heidi Convery. I'm the founder of Flourish LLC. I've been coaching the employees of the Festa Group for about three and a half years now, and I'm really excited to spend some time with Reich this morning. How was your time with Chris? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was fun. Uh, Chris and I have known each other for a while, and, and uh, it's always fun having a great conversation with him. It's an incredibly fast it is. 10 minutes. I know. It this is. will be faster. Oh, great. <laughs> um, so you had mentioned to Chris at the end that you took the StrengthsFinder assessment before our chat today. Mm -hmm. And that assessment really helps identify kind of what makes you tick. 
So what gives you energy, what um, you're really great at in terms of business building or interacting with others. And then it also gives you some blind spots. So it gives you kind of your full 34 list. We'll chat a little bit about your top 10 this morning and then maybe talk a little bit about one or two that are at the bottom of your list because that's usually where people want to kind of go first is, but what? How am I not this? Yeah, well, I can't wait to learn about myself. <laughs> oh, good, good. I know it's a little bit strange for yeah. someone you've never met to come in and be like, Reich, let me tell you who you are. Okay. Um, so I listened to your conversation with Chris a little bit and heard some perfect examples of some of your top 10 strengths. So out of your top 10, you're really dominant in strengths that are executing. So they like to get things done. They're really motivated to complete something. Um, and then you also have a couple that are really strong in relationship building. So listening to you chat earlier, it made sense to me that you were, you kind of lit up and got a little bit more excited about talking about solving problems, getting to know clients, developing mm -hmm. those relationships. Um, one of the first ones that I wanted to talk to you about was actually about the end of your conversation with Chris. So he mentioned what's something that you don't like to do. And you said, leave clients. And so one of your top strengths is called Relator, which is a talent that is really gifted at building strong, vulnerable, authentic connections with others. So you don't necessarily need like a host of friends, a room full of networking opportunities. You get more fulfillment and energy from close relationships with a smaller group of people where you can really connect. Does that feel... It does. Like you? It does. I'll, I'll, I've always thought of myself as an introvert, and so it's hard for me to, you know, cocktail hour is just not a thing for me. Right. You know? but, right. But having a, a really deep conversation is. Yeah. And that's, I imagine, you know, Relator, the longer you're able to build a relationship with someone like a client that you're talking about, the stronger that connection is. You get more energy from that connection with that client. So when you have to cut that off, that's a hard hit. Yeah, it's, for that relator. it's breaking up. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. I know it. And see, someone who maybe had relator a little bit lower mm -hmm. wouldn't feel that same loss as you do with having that strength high. Another one that I thought was really interesting um, that I wanted to talk about was you were mentioning this wide mm -hmm. knowledge base that you have to have uh, when you're working with clients. So mm -hmm. you kind of how different your day is. You might have to go do a workshop and then you might have to talk to a client about what to do with their computers and what to do with cell phones and how to, so that you're, you're limitless in terms of what you need to know about the industry. So you have a strength really high called input. And that one um, is about the collection of knowledge. So you are gifted in remembering small bits of information, random facts. You really enjoy kind of learning. You talked about that earlier. I really like to learn about something that I don't know about and gather that information and knowledge. That's because of that strength of input where you get energy from collecting things that you don't know, right? Yeah. And then being able to use it. Do you feel like that has served you really well in a new industry like this? Uh, yeah, and it's, it's certainly uh, having that broad knowledge base has put me in a unique position to be able to help others. Right. Uh, because I, you know, because I, I, going in, I don't really necessarily know what their need is, mm -hmm. so I have to, to, you know, learn from them what what their needs are, or help them identify their needs. Yeah. But then to be able to to address that with, you know, whatever that need is, to to have that uh, knowledge to be able to help them. Yeah. Right. It's, I love input. If you aren't on a trivia team, you should consider it. <laughs> Because input is really gifted at these random pieces of knowledge you don't even realize that you know. So just as an aside in this conversation, okay. consider a trivia team. It's just my gift to you. Thank you. Um, another part of that, that kind of, you talked about the love of learning and getting to know something, but also the teaching aspect. So being able to share what you know, that's also a part of input. Mm. You and I share that strength together. So we tend to really enjoy teaching others what we know what we've learned, what we've figured out, something new that, you know, we learned on the radio on their way into work. I mean, just, we get energy from gathering that knowledge. So we like to share that knowledge too. Mm -hmm. But you also have another strength really high called developer. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's a relationship building strength because it's about human potential. It's about growth. So developer really feels genuinely that we all have more to grow. We're all we're not, we haven't arrived yet. There's still a little bit more that we can kind of develop, that we can learn about ourselves, that we can develop as professionals. Um, 
developer is actually called the teaching strength. Okay. So it happens to be really common in teachers, but it's because of that belief in the potential of others. So you kind of couple this belief in the potential of others with input and this knowledge base. And I would imagine that the times that you get to teach others, if it's giving a workshop, if it's sitting down with a small group, that that's a really big energy surge for you. It is. It is. I, I enjoy that. That you know, it takes a lot of preparation to do it mm -hmm. well because you want to you want you know, want to make sure it's it's right. It's it's right. Uh, it meets their needs, but it's uh, uh, to actually do it uh, is is great. Yeah. 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 And it's funny too. You know, I um, I don't know if you feel this way sometimes where you might get out of a situation like that and you're like, man, it was really great. I've got this big kind of boost of energy. You know, I really enjoyed it. Where someone else might go and do the exact same thing and be drained. Mm. They might kind of leave a workshop and just be like, I need a nap, you know, I need to lay down or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's because of those strengths that you have high that you really get energy from that. Mm. So this concept is when you know what you, where your talent lies, putting yourself into more situations to be able to use those will bring you more efficiency and more energy in your job. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about in your top 10 you mentioned earlier with Chris about setting standards in the industry because it's such a young industry. It hasn't been around for a hundred years, right? Mm -hmm. And so you are really pivotal in that and establishing what is, what the standards are, what's okay, what is not okay, right? Mm -hmm. It's the right way to dispose of electronics. What's the right way to recycle them. Um, another strength that you and I have in common is called belief that's really high in yours. And I think if I could come up with, if I, if I had to sort of guess a word that I would use with belief, standards is probably what I would say. So I really, I love that that's kind of where you went with that. Okay. Um, belief is about a core set of values mm -hmm. that you bounce everything off of. Mm -hmm. And so when someone has a strength like belief really high, um, standards are, they're not just a good thing, they're a necessity. Mm -hmm. um, that to be able to look and make sure that um, ethics are involved, that morality is involved, mm -hmm. that doing things the right way is involved. Um, with belief high as a strength, I would say most people really know where you stand on most things. That's kind of how belief presents itself to others. Yeah. That I hope so. The, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I think belief is a great strength. Yeah. Um, what do you, do you generally, do you feel like your core values maybe personally influence you professionally too? I mean, do you feel that strong um, kind of line for yourself about everything is going to bounce off of this set of core values? Yeah, you know, when I was younger, I, I had sort of my work life and my home life and my church life. And, you know, they were, these are kind of two, you know, like three or four different roles that I had. Yeah. But they were kind of very separate. I had a wall between them. And then as I, hmm. as I, I grew older and, and kind of figured out that, all right, no, my, my core beliefs, my core values need to apply everywhere I am. And yeah. I need to have one life. And it doesn't matter, you know, moving from client to client or from, you know, work to home to, you know, wherever I am, it's it's me. Yeah. And so th to be authentic and to uh, to follow those core set of, of beliefs is, is important. And I've had clients talk about that, too. Uh, I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah I think... Most of our strengths, some are a little easier to see than others. Um, I, some are a little more visible and out there for people to be able to notice. Um, belief, I think, is one that is often very visible to others. Mm. And whether or not you realize it, I think you probably communicate those core values pretty consistently, okay. uh, and which is great. You know, you have a you have a compass for yourself to help bounce all of your decisions off of, so that mm. there's a consistency involved with that. Mm -hmm. Last thing I just wanted to mention before, I told you this was like the fastest 10 minutes in the yeah. world. Um, sometimes when individuals look at the last couple of strengths on their list, there's some confusion on there of, I really thought that this was a talent of mine. I do this every day. Mm. Um, or there might be a shock. Sometimes people have a strength like empathy really low and then they feel like maybe they've got some sort of <laughs> issue with humanity. Yeah. Not the case. Um, your, the last strength on your list that came up was communication. And I like to mention that because sometimes I think uh, we can look at a word like communication, which we know a definition of, and think, oh my gosh, mm. you know, I can't, this is saying I can't communicate with people. Definitely not the case. Um, communication as a talent, as a strength on here, really has to do with 
using vibrant language and imagery and um, words and kind of a, a physical presence in the way that they communicate. Mm -hmm. So I kind of think of storytellers, or really a lot of animation in the way that they interact with others. So that being on the bottom of your list doesn't mean you're not able to do that. It means that you don't get as much energy from doing that. Hmm. So someone with communication would seek out opportunities to um, be in front of a large group and be really animated and vibrant. And let me use 20 words where five words might do hmm. to get people on board and kind of motivated. So because that's low, that just means, and because we're later is higher for you, I think that really means that you probably um, get more energy and uh, satisfaction from a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody instead of maybe a larger group. Mm -hmm. um, and if you ever find yourself needing to get more animated in your communication, seeking out somebody who might have communication high as a strength to kind of take that responsibility. So, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I do speak frequently mm -hmm. um, you know, at conferences and, and so forth, but it's not something I ever really wanted to do. It was a necessity. Right. And so, uh, and I and I still do it, and I kind of push myself to do it, yeah, because it's important to do, yeah. Uh, but it's not, yeah. So I, I, I guess I see that. Yeah, I think for you to get more satisfaction out of those opportunities would be to lean in on that input developer role. So instead of seeing it as a large communication opportunity for people, you kind of viewing that role specifically for you as I get the chance now to communicate what I know that input mm -hmm. and give that to others so that they can develop more developer, right? Yeah. And grow a little bit and use that as kind of your focal point going in. Great. great. It's been really great to get to know you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell well, you a little bit about yourself. That was quick. <laughs> it was quick. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us that were able to watch. Reich, thank you very much. I, I got to tell you, there were there are two things that I was really fascinated about in that, that time. One was that I get to lay my friends open and kind of see what you look like on the inside. <laughs> but you said something that really kind of caught me. And that was, that was, you know, when I was, when you were younger, you perceived yourself as having different roles. And as you've matured, that's all kind of melded into the same, the same one because you kind of look and, and, and I can definitely see that in, in friends my age, right? Because mm -hmm. we're getting gray hair, right? It's, yeah. Um, but I can definitely see that in friends my age who, who may have been different, but now they're all, all those roles are kind of the same. And they've re kind of realized that, you know, what I am is good and I feel good about myself. So it's okay for me to express my inner beliefs and who I am, my core values in everywhere, as opposed to having three different roles. Anyway, I just thought that was really kind of fun. Thanks, and, and it's a relief when you realize that. That's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great point. It helps us be more natural yeah. and find more joy in our work. So thank you again. Enjoyed it very much. Enjoy talking. <laughs>